Hey, welcome back. My name is Al, and today I have another ZBrush vs. Blender sculpt, and today we are sculpting Parasect. So before we get there, if you'd like to support this channel, check out my game Centroid in the link below. Let's do it. This isn't actually ZBrush, this is ZBrush Core Mini, but it's going to be lumped into the ZBrush category anytime I do one of these things. But like I said, on the left we have ZBrush Core Mini, and on the right we have Blender. Most of you know what Blender is. I'm assuming you know what Blender is, you know how powerful it can be. Some of you might not know what ZBrush Core Mini is, so it is just a very, very, very watered down version of ZBrush. Like, insanely watered down. But I like it a lot. Uh, I like it more than Blender, honestly, for most tasks. If it's just sculpting, not adding objects, not doing anything complex, I like ZBrush Core Mini. So let me know in the comments below if you've ever used ZBrush Core Mini, what do you think of it? And if you've also used Blender, which do you prefer? One of the interesting things about Core Mini is that you cannot add objects. And the Blender users out there, their minds are just like, alarm, alarm, alarm. That sounds terrible. And quite honestly, most times it is. It is quite infuriating if you're trying to add an object. So in this, in Core Mini, I have to start from a sphere, right? And that's already very limiting. Specifically, the mushrooms, right? I was doing fine until I started making these mushrooms, and I really wish I had the ability to do other objects like Blender can. In Blender, I made one mushroom, I can duplicate, move it around, place it where I want. I still wish Blender had an insert mesh brush feature, but hopefully it's coming. I know there's some hacks that you can do to make something like that happen, but, but still, it was much easier to do this inside of Blender. In Blender, as you saw, I dropped in a sphere for the shell, I dropped in a sphere for the body, basically just a whole bunch of spheres for the arms, the, the mandibles, the little claws, everything. Just drop it in a whole bunch of spheres and then I will sculpt and then voxel remesh from there. So it's, it's really nice to be able to have all these different shapes and to be able to sculpt on each one individually. So in Core Mini, there is no such thing as adding objects. Everything you see in that bottom left render it started from a sphere, and it was a sphere that's been stretched and pulled and pushed to form that. Um, so this definitely is not for, you know, a production anything. If you are just sculpting to have fun, ZBrush Core Mini is a lot of fun, and it is far more optimized than Blender is in sculpting. So I'm on a Mac. I have many videos um, discussing how Blender is not optimized on a Mac. So linked above is a video that I made discussing some of the Blender settings that I tweaked and changed to make it uh, better optimized for sculpting on my Mac. So one of the pros to Core Mini is that it feels a lot better. Sculpting feel is a huge deal, and if you've only ever used Blender, you have nothing to compare it to. Now this might not be that big a deal if you have a super powerful machine, but I totally feel a difference in sculpting um, even with the optimization that I've done in Blender for my Mac, I totally feel a difference when I go from Blender to even ZBrush Core Mini, let alone ZBrush itself. So Core Mini is very smooth, very buttery. I love it a lot. So here's another question for the Blender users out there. Is Blender your primary sculpting solution? I know Blender can do everything, but have you ever sculpted inside of Core Mini? Right, I don't expect you to go out and spend 950 bucks on ZBrush, but you could go out today, download Core Mini. Have you ever tried it? I would love to hear your thoughts. So at the bottom of the screen, you can see the end renders. They definitely have different kind of styles that I went with. So I strayed away from the concept a little bit in Core Mini, and I added this, uh, I don't know, just like a little different type of mushroom growing out of, out of a shell on top. I thought it was, it was pretty neat, it was fun. This whole process was really, really fun for me. Really, you know, harkened back to my Pokemon days in the early 2000s, late 90s. So much fun. Let me know in the comments below, how do you feel uh, about the Blender final product? How do you feel about Core Mini final product? Which one, in your opinion, actually won this uh, quote unquote competition here? The side-by-side -side sculpt. I personally like the Core Mini version because it's stuck closer to the concept art that I was working from. On the right-hand side, there's lots of things that I like. I really like the detail around the eyes in the Blender version. 
and I am still learning how to use Blender. I hate the teeth in the Blender version. Uh, at the very end of this video, you'll see another time lapse, so you should pause and just look at the teeth on the Blender version. It looks so derpy, but hey, what are you gonna do? Okay, so from this point forward, I have pretty much accomplished uh, the mushrooms, right? I finished up the mushrooms in Core Mini, and that was the most difficult part of this whole thing. Like I mentioned, I can't add objects, so it was literally using clay buildup to kind of stretch some of those polygons out just to be able to use the move brush or snake hook to pull out ever so slightly and make it look like a mushroom. Turned out great in the end, but it was a nightmare to say the least. But the rest of this uh, video is just a whole bunch of details. Like I mentioned, I really liked what I did with the uh, eye wrinkles in the Blender version. Both of these sculpts were a lot of fun. I always run into issues with Blender using multi-res. Just trying to figure that out. I don't think it's possible to do very well on my on my Mac, but I was able to use it a little bit. It was starting to lag a little bit, but I definitely used that multi-resolution modifier thing on the face to get more details in the face, and you can see that. Most of my Blender sculpts don't quite go as detailed. I know I could push it further. I think what I'm gonna have to do is install Blender on my PC again and try sculpting over there. It's far more powerful. From what I've been told, Blender uses more of the graphics card and ZBrush, I knew this, is like 100% CPU. So that's probably where some of my issues in Blender are coming from because my graphics card really sucks. But I am so thankful for what I have and it's working, working out well enough. One thing, a little tip, that you can do, you see me do this often in my sculpts, is using the damn standard brush, or the, it's called the slash brush inside of Core Mini, or the draw sharp brush inside of Blender, is you can hit certain features with that um, just to accentuate some of the details. So imagine um, if I had like a, a bump or a wart on, on this guy, and there are some bumps that I hit the bottom of just with that slash brush, just accentuates the details, makes it pop a little better, specifically from distance. Um, so I could have done that more in Blender. Some of the details when you zoom out get lost, but super enjoyable. It was a lot of fun to make. Uh, comment below what Pokemon I should make next. If any, what would you love to see? Blender versus ZBrush. Let me know. Hey, thank you for sticking around for this video. If you love all things 3D and you felt like I earned it, please hit that subscribe button. I will catch you next time.